Well, how are you doing? <clears throat> this is going to be a short video. Uh, I'm going to call this Zenithphobia. And obviously it's directed at all the fools on our opposition side. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> I've been told by, by fools and by lawyers in recent times that <clears throat> Zenith distance is not the distance between the two Zeniths. Right? I've been told that it's an angle, just a Zenith angle. There is such a thing as a Zenith angle, also called a depression angle. But that angle, which I have in here, right, that angle must then be multiplied by 60 to get your minutes of degree. That multiplied by 60 minutes of degree distance, right, I have it in here for this orange line and the observer Zenith here. That minutes of degree dist distance then is from here to here. It's a straight line distance, and that's why it works with parallel zeniths, because then you have on across a flat plane, those minutes of degree can become nautical miles one for one. No problems whatsoever. But on the globe model, right, they can't do that because they have divergent zeniths, right? So I'm just going to show something here, right? Now, some of the things I've covered already, but I'm just going to cover them again. First of all, they need two things here. They need a tangent plane, which is a horizontal plane, something they don't have so they're admitting that they can't do this process on a curved surface they have to literally use reality which is flat to do this process that's number one number two is they need a second horizontal plane at the center of their globe right right a celestial horizon or if you were if this was someone standing at the north pole and this would be the equatorial plane or whatever right so that's what they need. They need two horizontals to do what we do in reality, which is just using one horizontal, which is the real re reality horizontal. To keep their belief alive, this is what they must do, right? <clears throat> now, I have been argued with over and over again, people not understanding definitions, people saying uh, to me from the opposition side that zenith distance is just an angle, right? And that coaltitude is just part of that angle, right? And coaltitude's definition is the complement to the altitude. Yes, altitude of what? This is a star. The complement to the altitude of the star. When you're using parallel zeniths, it doesn't matter what altitude the star is at, right? Because your angle to it will be a front-on perspective view. So you're going to get whatever angle you get. And it just works. I don't know how it works. I don't know what the stars are. Don't know what height they are. Don't know anything about them. All I know is that they're there. They appear to be there in the sky. We take an angle to them, and the degrees of that match by 16 nautical miles along the surface of Earth. Right. But that can only work with parallel zeniths. But of course, on the globe model, they have divergent zeniths. So <clears throat> here is the observer zenith going straight up here. Here is the second angle brought from the original angle that's taken in reality, brought down to the mathematical center of a globe. And where this angle comes out and hits the, uh, the ex extremities of the globe and uh, the surface, that is the GP. So here is the GP, here is the observer. Observer, GP, right? So this then goes all the way to the celestial body, to the very center of the celestial body. That's how that works, right? And then, right, you calculate, right, you have a zenith angle and you have a depression angle, or a zen, or sorry, you have an elevation angle here, and then you have the depression angle or a zenith angle, right? But <clears throat> all, the ob all they can do on a globe model, only, the only thing they can do, right, is they can <clears throat> take an elevation angle, right, and then take the depression angle or a zenith angle from that, right? So here you have a 56.43, right, angle, zenith angle, right, between the observer zenith and the angle line, right, right here, that's making a parallel with this other line that's coming from the center of our globe. But this is the problem. <clears throat> their angle line doesn't go all the way to meet the zenith from the GP, whereas in reality, the, two, the zenith distance and even like in reality, this in reality this orange line is actually going to um, the star. So the star is actually here, but because they're on a globe, 
they have or sorry, because they believe they're on a globe, they have to do this crazy nonsense and move move the angle down to the center of their globe and make this GP here and send this off up to the center of their of a of a star. And technically they should every time then be taken into account the distance to the star if they're using divergent zenits. But they won't. They don't do any of that. There's no need for that because in reality there's parallel zenits. But our opposition try to deny then the distances that are claimed to their stars. Because in reality, if the star is 10 light years away, then the co-altitude, which is the zenith observer, or sorry, the observer zenith, <clears throat> then must match that. So that must be 10 light years away. So if this is from here to here is 10 light years away from the surface of that globe, then the observer, the observer zenith must be 10 light years away to match the co-altitude. That's how that works. It's a complement to the altitude. Altitude of what? Altitude of the celestial body. You're, you have to complement it. That's how it works. And then, <clears throat> right, but, that's where you, but that is within fantasy because the truth is, is that they, that happens in reality, but in reality, they don't have divergent zeniths and they don't, have star, they don't stay at a distance to any of these stars. So they don't have stars that are 10 and hundreds of light years away. Because in reality, the zenith distance here should be from this point here to the center of this star here, which would be, if we were not reality, sorry, in globe reality, mm -hmm. right? That would be, that could be 11, 12 light years, something like that, a crazy distance, right? Besides the fact that there is no two-way speed of light measurement, there's only a calculation and agreed upon convention based on four pre-assumptions and two averages. Besides the fact that they need two horizontal planes to make this work, Besides the fact that <clears throat> that they ignore what zenith distance is and co-altitude is, besides all that, there is still, even if you gave them, if you ignored all that, right, they still have an unbelievably, unbelievably obvious problem that completely destroys all their claims. I've shown, I've said this before in the last two videos, but I didn't focus on it. I said it, but I didn't focus on it. Here is the angle they have, 56.43. That's their zenith angle after taking the elevation angle, right? So, <clears throat> right, 56.43, right? Multiplied by 60 equals 3385. So 3385, okay? That's what that is. So <clears throat> let's get an angle here, right? Here we are. So we're going to go from here to there, right? What's the angle now, right? So let's just, sorry, I just want to do this. Sorry, this thing is a bit up here, sorry. Yeah, that's what I meant to do. Let's go here, click on this, go to that. Yeah, don't show label. Angle 180. Right. So the angle then becomes 60.18. So it was 56.43, right? But they weren't going to the other zenith. But when the angle went to the other zenith, like it's supposed to do, and like always happens in reality, but so is the fact that. You're not using parallel zenits like they're supposed to be doing in reality. Besides the fact that we're supposed to look past the fact that they need two horizontal planes. Besides the fact that they have divergent zenits, right? Besides the fact that they have stars that are light years away, right? Based on a calculation, right? After all of that, they still fail. Because 3385, right? What's 60.18, right? Multiplied by 60 equals 3610. So that's several hundred nautical miles. So they are literally out with this. This And this is just one of mm. three, let's just say. Right? Let's just say someone is on board a ship. And they're taking three angles to three stars. Right? That's just one. And they're already hundreds of miles out. Already hundreds of nautical miles out. They should be. 60.18 but only 56.43
So their whole model fails everywhere. At every point, it fails. I don't know what stars are. So there's no point in telling me about your straw man model, about stars. I don't know what height they are. I don't know what they are. I don't know if they have a height. I don't know if they have any physicality whatsoever. All I know is we see them and they match one for one with, no, with minutes of degree. That's all I know because we use, in reality, parallel zenits. But when you, when you use divergent zenits and you start bringing your angles down into the center of a globe and all this other crazy nonsense, when you do all that nonsense, right, you end up with hundreds of miles. You're out by hundreds of miles and that's just your first, that would be your first radius, radius line for your first circle of equal attitude and you're going to do two more the same. So how far out are you going to be? It'll never ever work. It can't work. It can only work with parallel zenits over a flat plane because our opposition need two flat planes, they need two separate angles, they need to ignore the distance to their celestial bodies, they need to <clears throat> pretend the zenith distance is not going to going all the way from one zenith to the other. They have to ignore what the reality of, uh, of the, the real definition of uh, uh, and what quality really is and what it means. They have to do all these things and still they get it totally wrong. Hundreds of nautical miles out. Totally wrong. Totally wrong. So <clears throat> I don't know what to say uh, other than this is, this is, I mean, they won't agree to this. They'll fight tooth and nail. But it's over. It's over. I gave you everything. I ignored the horizontal planes. I ignored the distance to your big stupid stars. I ignored all your claims to do with zenith angle. And having a, a zenith distance is just being an angle. right? Even though you must multiply that angle by 60 to get the actual zenith distance. And that has to be done through co-attitude. But we'll ignore all those very important things that navigators use. We'll ignore all of that. We'll just use your little zenith angle. And what do you end up with? A pathetic hundreds of miles out. It's pathetic. I mean, how anyone can keep believing. Anyone who's been in this argument for a few years, how anyone can keep believing in a globe out, I just don't know. I don't I don't know what the stars are. I'm not going to pretend to know. I'm not going to state what they're made of, if they're physical or not. I don't know. All I know is we see them in a front-on perspective view, and they match six, uh, 60 nautical miles per one degree. Right? What's what's a degree? It's an angle measurement. What, did, what does an angle require? 90 degrees. Horizontal plane, perpendicular. All, all I know is that that's required to take any elevation angles. And it's admitted by our opposition here because if they could do, to do these things on the surface of their globe, they wouldn't need to be creating tangent planes. On the flat earth side, we don't need any tangent curves, do we? We don't need those things because we just deal with reality. We don't have all this silly nonsense down here. And even with all this nonsense and all this rubbish and all these maths that they go on with, they're still hundreds of miles out. Hundreds of nautical miles out. So I don't know what I I don't know what I mean, I'll start laughing if I stay on this video, so I'm just gonna stop it. But uh, <clears throat> this is this is pathetic. Thanks for watching.